Backfire. I think uh, I think you this this hero is not solved yet. Rubik is a step in the right direction, but I don't really know. But let's see what B Cop and Black have to say about it. Yeah, thank you very much. What do you think about it, Black? I what, think I need your words first before I can think of my own. Picking an Ursa into a Spectra is a little bit of a suicide move because right. a dagger you can't dispel with Enrage. It's always going to be on you even through BKB. Being kited is his worst nightmare. Don't quite like it. I'm going to go Fnatic. Okay. B Cup, it's all on you. Uh, his words are my words. Oh, how easy that was. Fine. Yeah. Let We're do Black, it. enjoy doing solo casting then for game number one. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Okay, B Cup, uh, you're out. All right. There's the door. Bye bye. See ya. Yeah. All right. Welcome to our Fnatic versus Execration series here. Me and B Cup back again. Because I threw him out Let temporarily to kind of show him who's boss, but yeah, he learned mean, his lesson. It happens. You learned your lesson, right? It's like you know, you tap your dog on the nose with the newspaper. That's yeah. where you just yeah. Basically, yeah. Except you took it a little bit more personal than the dog would. But <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. My tail, tail between my legs. Yeah. Thirty seconds to battle. But yeah, I'm not sure what it picked, Ursa. Like, a it's a tough matchup against the Spectra. Sure, it's good against Tide Hunter, but. We'll see how it works out for them. Maybe he can snowball with a fast battle fury, get really far ahead, and work around it that way. Yeah, we'll see if he can get there. So what is mid Beastmaster gonna do? He's just not gonna just get axes, he already scaled it. Does he just go one axe? I don't know. I don't really know what the counterplay is. Like I just feel like if Rubik steals those axes. It's gonna be troublesome. It's gonna be brutal. And the way to around that was not skilling up the axes. Uh, more than once yeah. the last time we saw. But that was also off lane Beastmaster. Yeah, who you can guard just like Solar Crest and these kind of items on. Not really a possibility this game because you are mid Beastmaster, you do want to scale. But the Rubik with the Axis has an additional 250 cast range and additional damage on them. He's going to do way more damage than you are with those Axis. Never seen it in practice though. Like only, you know, in theory. Right. Never quite seen it work out that way. Yax for Moon here, too. Feels like it could be really strong, not just off the axis. Sure. Stealing Alina stun, Centaur stun, Stampede. I mean, there's so many good spells to steal this game. Stampede, Laguna. If you can get an Earth Splitter. Yeah, Earth Splitter nice. or Centaur stun. Alina old with its shard, of course, on the AoE. Lots of good users this game. We'll have to see how it goes. If we see a better Rubik this time over mid in terms of just able to do more because we felt that the, was the Rubik useless. was yeah, lacking. Yeah, for sure. They tried it out. Didn't work because he didn't skill it. But as I said, like this game, almost 100% he was skilled. That's a rough position to be in. Because you know you don't want to skill it, but you kind of have to. Yeah. Same when you're OD. Like, you don't want to skill it, but you kind of have to. Because <laughs> otherwise, you're just not the hero. Yeah. We'll see where he goes right now. Obviously, just one in the inner beast, one in the axes. Bottom lane, LSA, as well as the hoofstomp double edge. So tanky, though, the Spectre hero. I really hope it's not going to become a Spectre meta again. We just came out of it. Yeah. I was not happy. With it around. It's just a hero you can't kill. Did so much damage just by being damaged. We went from like, oh, is it Blade Mail Spectre? And there was also Meteor Hammer Spectre we were seeing in that same patch. Yeah. Lots of different Spectres. Top lane. Good Harris. Good Shards as well. Do they have any region coming in? Yep. One healing cell from the Titan. They should be able to sustain themselves. Rubik picking up the Water Rune. Pretty standard stuff. I mean, mid lane. Yesterday was like a little exception to the rule where mid lane got solo killed like three times in one game. Usually, like, you never die in mid lane. Yeah. It's just too much health to work with. Too many resources. They need to really change the water runes, I want to say. There's just too many runes to work with. Yeah. I will we'll see what they come up with, but they definitely kind of overcompensated with the complaints people had. Like, I was in the same boat. I hated the power rune RNG, so it kind of made up for that, but a little bit too much. Right. Palace on the run. Shards placed perfectly. They're looking for the sweep. That lands onto the tusk. Jab's in trouble. 
No mana to work with, and these right clicks, he just needs two more after he ate that fairy fire, but they've got the slow from the gush. That'll let the tusk get away. Chuan getting chased. Palace looking for the damage. One more shot needed, and he's got it. So Palace with the first blood. Aggression from Fnatic that they end up uh, paying for. Yeah, and we see why Ursa is such a good matchup against uh, Tidehunter. Kraken Shield does nothing, and your Anchor Smash also doesn't do anything because most of the damage comes from the Furious Web Stacks. Unfortunate that he's going to go down there after they played that aggressively, and definitely the opposite of what they wanted. Tusk gets out, but Tide... Weird, weird item build. Like, he went oh, bottle. Yeah. There's no more runes for you, really. So going at bottle, your bottle is more expensive, heals less, so overall a pretty big nerf to the item. And you're not going to get any bounty runes because your mid wants it. Yeah, the, well, the mid... God. Mid has been very greedy with all the runes. I, you see it, like the change. And the offlaners were picking up bottle quite a bit. They were going to the bounty runes, but that doesn't seem to be the case. We saw, I think, bottle one or two times in the Chinese region already in the offlane. But I think that slowly kind of faded away from, you know, week one. Yeah, I mean, you lost two runes to pick up. So it's just like a really big nerf because the mid lane really needs it. Because if the enemy mid lane gets it, yours doesn't, you're just in trouble. Unless you do like a DK or something like that, then it makes a lot more sense. But yeah, in a game like this, it's it's pretty rough. Yo, we level five, three in the axes. And now they're stolen. <laughs> so Moon's got him. Oh my god. Hey, he has one more X soon. He has to be careful. He needs to be very careful. Not gonna oh. throw him. Oh. They did throw him, but they just weren't. You're gonna see the up. damage already. Like, it's 118 damage per axe, and the damage uh, and per stack also goes up because of the passive, of course. Sitting at 12.4 already. It just scales so much better than Beastmaster itself. Oh dear. It also lasts longer because of your ultimate, of course, which amplifies debuff duration. It's just overall much, much better. And it's gonna be scary. Like, once he has his Agonimus... <laughs> our favorite place, Pain City. Axes, axes, both thrown at each other, and you just see Yoi go, ah, I don't know if I want to continue to do that. Yeah, I took a little more damage there, half health. Top lane, Ursa. In trouble, gone. Palace, trying to get away. Chuan gets the kill. So much damage coming out from level two. Tech team, gosh. Anchor smash, a lot of physical damage there. You can see there was a lot of determination from Tuan to get back into the season. Uh, you know, he started streaming and he, he's been playing pretty high, high quantity amount of games every single day. He's played a couple against you. I know, uh, I think before you came to Romania for the first season, he was playing a couple against you. Yeah, we've been slapping each other. It's always a good time. Good snowball dodge. Snowball dodge. They've got the gush. They should have the damage. RR getting low, but... He's fast. He's got the stick, and he's fast. Yeah. Definitely preparing for the next marathon there. Mid tower taking a lot of damage. It is Rubik putting on a whole lot of pressure. And his beast master can't stop it because, you know, take a bite of your own medicine, bro. Yeah, those axes hurt. And you don't want to be dealing with those sticking by the tower. And just a reminder, it's only level 2 passive, and no axe amplification damage yet. And it's already this ridiculous. Oof. Like, he's getting crushed in mid lane, really. You, even if you look at the CS, 60 CS for Rubik. You go. Getting chased. There's three here. Stampede you, Snowball. Can it catch up? Is a Snowball faster than a Centaur? It is! They caught up. Pretty tanky, They're gonna get though. this kill. Not tanky enough. All there is from BDZ is an LSA, but that's not going to matter. It's a rough start, for sure. Ursa also not really dominating the lane, as yeah. I thought he would. Do you think Snowball should be that fast? It used to be even faster. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like Tusk's biggest asset, right? Oh, they want to potentially look for the stacks here. They have Tidehunter, so when he's six... They might potentially be looking to contest these stacks, maybe even steal them. There you go. Find the Centaur again. Primal Roar used. That's out on to Jabs, and they'll get the kill onto the Tusk. They'll use the Primal Roar. 
I don't think Moon even cares to steal the Primal Roar, honestly. Nah, the Axe is just hurt so much more. Yeah. I mean, once you have the Axe, you know you can do the little switcheroo real quick. Oh, he's actually just running into the jungle. He found the Titan. Oh, it's the Axes. Damage. He wants the sleep, but he's just not going to be accurate enough with the Stomp. They'll get the kill. And now on the other side, though, Moon, he gets caught by Yoey, as well as that Ursa of Palace. So two kills, one apiece. And, well, Moon, that's not what he wanted. You get a kill on the Elder Titan, and then all of a sudden you fall back into both the one of the two. Yep, finally getting punished. But uh, uh, there's another interaction, by the way, that we didn't talk about. Fate Bolt and any other damage source of your hero also deals increased damage per stack. Hmm. So from just one X throw, your Fate Bolt deals 25% more damage, which is pretty significant. Because it only keeps stacking up. Yeah. Beastmaster also going X. Wahoo! Yeah. That's one thought. of the better bounty rune noises. It's probably one of the best, if not the best. I still don't know where the reference is from. People keep telling me, but I just don't know. That it's a reference yeah. to something? From some TV show or something? Not sure. I have no idea. You know everything, usually, about TV shows. That was... Uh, I, I had a couple in a row. That was about it. Yeah, you want to talk about DC? You want to talk about Marvel? <laughs> You want to talk about this? You want to talk about that? Eh, sure, let's talk. Never stop talking. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm the chatterbox in the green room. No, extra creation actually leading by 1k. Getting that big stack on the Beastmaster. They're going to get the tier 1 bottom, too. Yeah. And they no didn't actually the stack on the side of Fnatic, so Rubik can't replicate that success. Three heroes up towards top. They're going to try and take a tier one themselves. Should be pretty free. Yeah, nobody coming over to stop this either. So both teams letting their tier ones go. Very hard to fight into the Ravage. Did they find... Oh, they didn't find the chipped vest for the Spectre. Unfortunate. Yeah, it's like the best item for her to have. That additional health region really helps with farming as well. Yeah, and then in the last game we saw Spectre, there was uh, one for both sides with the Centaur and the other team. Yeah. I mean, Ursa right now is carrying it rather than the Centaur, which is pretty interesting. That he's holding on to the Ironwood Tree. Maybe we'll switch that around eventually. But having the additional region of 5 is also just massive. Look at Ursa sitting at 16.4. They got the sweep onto the Spectre, but... He has Haunt. Yeah. He's going to try and TP out. Or he's TP. Fine. Radiance bottom tower is Yoey under closing on the axe, and so is the Rubik. Yeah, sitting pretty neck and neck. Yeah, Rubik, 1300 gold away from his Beastmaster, who's catching up to the Rubik. Yeah. He went for the Soul Ring, of course, which Rubik didn't. So he's a little bit further away than the Rubik. Rubik was invis, he'll steal the Dragon Slave. Yep. Also, but it's not what you want. I'm surprised he didn't just steal from Yoey. They got the deny. Pretty significant. Yeah, I want to see him steal the axes. I want to see the amplification with this uh, arcane supremacy. Yeah, now that it's level four. Yeah, it should be about 18% per stack or something. I think oh. he's just waiting for him to throw the axes and know for a fact that he threw them. He, yep, he summoned the pick just there and now the hawk. Oh, he doesn't want to give it away. <laughs> No, now he throws them, and he's throwing them out of vision. Dyer's Sleep came out, hit the Enchantress as well it. as the Tide. And yeah, now he's got him. All right. It's 16% oh, per stack. <laughs> and an Arcane Rune. Yep. And 170 damage per Axe rather than 130, which is going to get even stronger once that Axe comes out. It's going to do so much damage, man. They need to kill this Rubicon fights. And he's going to get the axe relatively soon. Bounty rune getting picked up here by Tron. They've got the blade mail picked up here by Spectre. So, you know, Spectre with the blade mail going into the Yasha. Mm -hmm. Feels great. Yeah, I mean, the timings are coming online. I'm more interested to see how much damage the Fate Bolt deals when there's like 10 axes. Stampede, they found the Spectre. They've got the LSA, the Laguna Blade, the kill on a oh. Raven. Blown him up with everything they had. They just did not have the Tide and the Tusk there in time. 
They'll go after RR, and they'll have one in return, but that is not one in return that's worth the life of a Spectre. Definitely You're not. Dead. Spectre. I wasn't really struggling, but now it's going to be a little bit set back in the farm department. And Urza has a big stack to look forward to. Now he just finishes Battle Fury. Going to be a lot of money. Good money infusion there. And there's the axe for Moon. That's getting delivered. Yeah, and Radiant spell life steal. I oh, know spell life steal. The spell steal is still there for about a minute and a half. He's got some time with these wild axes. All right, damage check. About 210 per axe. Not bad. 420 per axe. 30% stack per axe as well. Whew. That's a lot. Yeah. He'll be throwing them constantly, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's always target number one. Yeah, I mean, also look at his cast range. It's going to be massive. So, yeah, it might even be tough to get on top of him. Oh, they're just going Roche with it. Not the worst idea. Oh, the damage is really racking up already. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did they just give this to the Spectre? Yeah, I mean... Hawk's going to spot this. Oh, just look at this damage. It's ridiculous. 700 per X. 800. And it's gone. <laughs> wow. All oh, right. Rubik takes for it. Rubik. That's... I don't know if I'm the biggest... I believe you lose your spell when you die with the Aegis. I'm not the biggest fan of it, necessarily. I Give still it. feel like you just want to enable your Spectre. Two. True. True, true. Yeah, it might be like a little bit, you know, oh, I'm, I'm feeling so good about this. Like, you're about to lose your axes if you don't get them again. Oh. He's nowhere near. Yep, now Beastmaster also picked up his axe, so lots of axes to look forward to. This is going to be <laughs> kind of hard to keep track of. All yeah. the axes is flying. Yeah. Maybe it will be like a fight where everyone is dead except Beastmaster and Ruby just throwing axes at each other. Well, if you throw the axes a certain way and they clash with other axes, you actually summon an axe into the game. Yeah. And then you have like a Dragon Ball Z kind of super battle. True. Oh, he needs to steal those axes. He always just threw them. Tag team? Oh, used he, early. He got the cast range. Jesus. Oh, wow. Well, he's got axes again. Yeah. <laughs> For a good two minutes. Four minutes even. He's going into the Etherlands next. I just even more cast range. I mean, this damage is just <laughs> so much higher than Beastmasters, actually. Like, it's... In fact, 26% higher. Man. And everybody knows from RPGs, things that stack. If the damage initially is higher already, the stacking damage will also be even higher and never ends. Because it never ends. It never ends. It even when you think it ends, it doesn't. Did you guys have that when you were like going on a road trip? This is the song that never ends. Something and then you similar, just but I don't remember. <laughs> and then you're just a kid, and you're annoying your parents by singing that song for the first 45 minutes of the road trip. Nico with the Blink Dagger. Are they going to the Rubik? Stampede. They're looking for Moon. Oh, the Blink's a little bit short. Axis Telekinesis coming through on Nico, but they blow him off. He's so out of position here. Yeah, Earth Splitter's coming through. Snowball to try and get the save. That's really well done. Wow. Actually, wow. so well done. That brings him back into the neutrals and away from this fight, but they've got the Primal Roar as well as the Axes. The LSA and the Ravage comes in. That's only going to land on the two. The Axes are starting to stack up on the Raven. They look over BDZ to try and get the kill on the Lina. Telekinesis onto the Earth, so they're trying to kill Moon for the second time. They get him with the Axes. So Yoey's Axes come out on top. Spectral Dagger thrown at Yoey, but Axes aplenty. And they will get yet another kill. So that was the two lives out of the hands of this Rubik. Plus the Tide and another Snowball away from the, the Earth of Palace. So what we spoke about came true. He died with those axes. He couldn't steal them again. Yeah. You built your Aghanims, but for what? Like This Rubik was non-existent in this team fight. He was caught way out of position. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have those axes, your impact is going to be so... So much less. Like, probably like 9% less, to be honest. From just the pure potential of damage that you have. Yeah. And that's something they will have to deal with. Like, Rubik will always be the person they will focus first. They'll need to be able to jump in between faster. Be in a better position. They need enough space to be made for Raven to come online. Yeah, he hasn't really felt 
strong enough to do anything yet. I really think if you gave that Aegis to Raven, the game would be a lot better. Like, he wouldn't feel as comfortable on Rubik, so he wouldn't be out of position as much. And then Spectre would just have a much better game. Tight. There was a lot of damage. A lot of quick damage. Once he has his BKB on Ursa, it's going to be very rough. Another smoke. Spectre again. Yeah, caught. Hoof stomp. LSA Gone. with the Laguna. Same as the last time. And they get a quick kill on a Raven. Things looking really good for Execration. Oh. Snowball just a little bit too late. Comes through and hits the Beastmaster as well as the Lena. The shards are right on the BDZ. The LSA ends up missing. Those Jabs in, but there's the blink forward. They'll get the kill on DJ. Nico's the one who grabs that. Axes again. And one and more. And Axes again. And there's done. the kill. <laughs> axes on axes on axes on axes. It doesn't really feel like Dota when Beastmaster's in the game. No, it, it it's does more like have a this shooting simulator. <laughs> the axe throwing simulator. Yeah, you know, you know that game where you like throw the disc in the air and you have to shoot it with a gun. Clay shooting? Something like that. Yeah, clay pigeons. Yeah, I've never yeah, done yeah. that before. Yeah, it's like what Beastmaster is playing this game basically. Yeah, he's looking at these heroes. Pull. And then just pops him in the air with the axes. Yeah. Spectra is pretty underfarmed at this point, and Ursa is snowballing pretty hard. Yeah, they haven't been able to shut down the Ursa at all, and well, Raven's been clipped a couple times. Yep. Halfway through to his BKB now. Once the BKB is online, the axes won't do any damage to him. Really, it's only the Spectra he has to worry about once the BKB is online. But Spectra, as we said, is not very farmed. Doesn't even have Manta yet. So, soaring for Centaur, going Axe next. Yeah. You know, perhaps this is one of those cases where, wow, this, this counter sounds really broken on paper, but in actuality, it is not as easy to pull off. Nope. Because you will always be the main target. <laughs> Clipped him. They're getting there. I mean, he's got the extra Aether One's cast range now. He's taken a lot of farm away from the Spectre, though. But he just found the whole triangle, now Spectre has nowhere to go to. True. Like if I'm a carry player, I'll be like, what are you doing, man? Radiant Play the other side, bro. Is under you got 1,500 cast range or whatever. Yeah, you can be where Ursa is. You're not that close. Yeah, so it says 1,500 cast range. Uh, about 2k cast range, not bad. About a blink dagger. Oh, two blink daggers. Let's see. Need maybe an item or two more for Spectre to feel like. Uh, Once Escadi is there, the Ursa attack. will feel pretty uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, so if you can open up that space, keep it close Radiant that entire time. Potentially, Good. you can keep the game in a winnable spot. Yeah. But that's the problem, though. Like, this Rubik is really taking a lot of space for himself. He will have to pay it back in the next team fight because he took a lot of money. Now it's time. Show your team why you took all that money. I think he probably just wants that blink dagger, and then from there he'll top tower is pull off attack. taking as much form Radiant's as he has. You say attack. that, but we all know how those Dyer's call players are. are I know. Buy me wards. Buy me salves. Buy me moon shard. Dyer's buy me moon shard. Give me the axe shard. Why are you Give not rotating? Axe. Yeah. I got ganked again. <laughs> Dude, stack for me. Why did you leave my lane? You just told me to stack. They're going to go after Nico. Might have to pop Stampede. They've got the telekinesis into the walrus punch. The control is there. They've got the snowball with the damage of the shards. That's well done. Axe is coming through, but right on top of Moon is Palace. So yep. Moon's already gone. The axes are out of the fight. They've got the BKB running out of duration in just a second. But the Primal Roar hits on to DJ. They'll get the kill there. That's going to be a second. The TP's out from the rest. OK, I am not impressed with this Rubik against uh, these face rushers. Like, Ursa just blinked on top of him. Yeah, he had no play. It's he needs like a ghost step, but he needs blink dagger. He needs so many more items. It's to be expected, though. I, we kind of have seen this story before. We saw this exact game play out. Yeah. And it was even worse. Yeah, you didn't even, get, you didn't even get the axes yeah. this high level. This time he gets the axes, but still can't really do much Radiant with it. Maybe after his blink dagger, the positioning will be a little bit easier because he has so much cast range, but... Maybe they get the second Roche? They will need to, because if Ursa gets there, they get the Aegis Cheese and the Shard on Ursa. Gush, Glimmer Cape, they do have no BKB Ravage, on and 
He has no BKB. Yeah. Be careful. They're holding it. They can't move. They've slowed him up. They may not even need to use it. Axe is to try and deter Fnatic from going in. Palace taking a lot of damage. Ravage! After he's already dead. That's going to come through on a BDZ. And now they're looking to get the damage onto the Lina as well as the Elder oh, Titan. The Axe is flying in from the Rubik. Gets the kill. All right, Moon from a distance. Axe is starting to do some things, but Centaur blinks. He's got the host up on the two. The Stampede used. Moon ends up dead. So now you no longer have Axis for yourself. The Earth's going to come through on a Raven. And the Axis from Yoey, almost enough to take out Raven, but they've got Snowball. the control. Can they stop the TBS? Yes, they came with a snowball from Jabs. DJ gets the kill. Nico might be next. The chase is on, but the shards are nowhere near the mark. Massive team fight for them. 3k gold swing in their favor. And finally, Rubik, you know, getting to show a little bit of that imbalance, but still, like the Centaur gets on top of him, he dies instantly. Yeah, position-wise, he was in a much better spot to hide in those trees, mm -hmm. kind of throw the axes. Let's see here again. The Ravage was also a little bit questionable. I don't think it was necessary. Not at all. A clip, one Elder Titan, that's it. Yeah, the Yules was used by BDZ, so he was fine. Yeah, you see the turnaround here on the Centaur, bling on top of the Rubik. Man, they didn't have Primal Roar. So the Rubik continued to throw axes until he finally was killed off by Nika. Roshan does respawn. This is going to be the next uh, next very big point of contention. That shard is going to be very important. If Ursa gets that, he will have so many more enrages. Got to be very careful with giving that away. And vice versa, the Rubik shard is pretty damn good this game. Do you go Rubik shard? Or do you go maybe even be generous and get the sigil? Like... Yeah, the movement speed slow could be really good. Walrus Punch comes out. Quick kill. Marar gone. And are they still hitting Roche? No. Like, if they get access again on Ruby, there's a free Roche. Maybe with that kill, they'll think about going Roche. Ooh. He got overpower. Oh. Wow! Look at him go, guys. He's going to use it soon. Oh, he just did. Bam, 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 bam. Pew, pew. Oh, that didn't last too long. <laughs> yeah, he didn't go for the base damage challenge. Otherwise, it would actually be pretty painful. It's 1200 damage. Yeah, the telekinesis is landing damage. It's nice, but you know, overpower plus 100 base damage is pretty legit. If you ever find a DD, you're hitting for 500. Yeah, he's definitely focusing on the telekinesis, which makes me think that they want to give him the shard. Yeah, if they get the shard. Roshan now being aggro by the Axis. But they see this. Oh, also Nether Shawl on Beastmaster. That is a dream. Dream item. Smoke from both sides. Yeah. Nico breaks smoke. Oh, oh wow. Well done there. Jab is just getting away with his life as he blinked out. And they got hoof stomp. Yeah. Plus blink dagger could be potentially be a big initiation. Initiation. Oh, he they blinks uh, in him they tight. Have, they have Ravage. I thought he was going to use it there. They'll look for the sweep. It lands out of the Enchantress. He's still looking to walk in. Blink on cooldown for another six seconds. The Gush comes out of the Centaur. They use the Haunt. They've got the Ravage, but it's only going to hit on Aniko. They'll get the kill on Aniko, however, and there's the Axis flying around. That gets the gem out of the hands of DJ as he falls on the Enchantress. They're going to go after Yoey. They're trying to get the kill out of the Beastmaster. The Axis back and forth. They go. It is really like a Jedi duel of axes as they come through and they'll get the kill. Palace with the BKB right on top of Moon and he takes out this Rubik that sets up right next to Roche. And another one there as Jabs gets caught. You have to be so much more careful if you're Moon here. He keeps getting caught up by the Ursa out of all heroes. And he has just no counterplay to it. Like, I think it was the fourth fight in a row where Ursa just jumps on him and he just dies to it. Now they get Roche, they get the shard. It is shard cheese. The shard goes to the Ursa as well. Now every Earth Shock is gonna proc 1.5 seconds and rage. One of the best shots in the game by far. A lot of the shards that we see that are kind of like A S tier or A to S tier mm -hmm. are just shards that we don't get the benefit of seeing only because they're on heroes that don't really want to spend that 1400 gold on a shard. Yeah, and I get it for free on a second Roche. Yeah. This game, though, is still far from over. Like, Spectre is going to have a Scotty soon. It's like a very big power spike for her. Right. If we could get a Psychic Headband, that would feel pretty fantastic. Yeah. Psychic Headband, or even better, the Tier 4, what's it called? 
The timeless relic, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That would amp up his damage Ooh. by. Ooh. Every action probably did like 500 damage. <laughs> yeah, amping it up. 25% debuff duration, 15% spell damage. D Jumping for the tide. Tides, I will say, gotta hit a better Ravage. No. Oh, they got Psychic Headband. They need to hit a better Ravage. They need a better position from Rubik. Like, if you want to win with a composition that's wonky, you really got to outplay the opponent. Like, you make one or two mistakes, you just lose the fight instantly right there. Because again, attack. Rubik has zero defensive tools. Nothing. I mean, now he has the Psychic Headband, but if Ursa BKBs, it doesn't matter. Top tower is under now he has a Basha as well. Does he move up to try and steal these axes? Uh, I, I mean, mean he can take them from the steps. Yeah, pretty much full, full screen, so. Oh, yeah. But if they would like him to see to try it. Dyer's top tower is under oh, attack. I actually wonder how he feels like mentally because he always stole these axes, but he doesn't really have much impact with them, you know? No. He's like, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't steal those axes anymore. Like, I'm always out of position trying to axe them. To be fair, it's not easy. You're a very squishy hero, and your screen is probably always on the heroes that you're throwing the axes on, not on the other heroes around him. Right. Especially because of their cast range, right? Yeah. They. Whoa. Just halfway was a way to mitigate all this damage. damage. Yeah. Spectrius, Guardian now picked up. Sitting at 2.8k health. Still half not level sure that's more. enough. It is going to be tough either way. They, they can kite the Ursa now, though. Also interested to see if he's going to skill the Spectral Dagger slow on top of that. Just to kite the Ursa a bit more. I would assume so. Because the slow goes up to 36%. It's pretty massive. Plus Scatty. Yeah. You're not moving. I, I don't think the 400 health is the option there to go for. Especially if you have a Scotty, you have enough mana to spam it. And they have four smoked up. Spectre just holding the base. Haste. Not gonna find anybody. Gold and Radiant's top tower is under attack. Need to be very careful. And just being built for Yoey. Four stab for the Rubik. He's also got that Ghost Scepter. Yeah. Would be good if they can kill the support first. They all need to TP out here, Masterpiece out. DJ, he has a gem. It would be a good pick off if he doesn't make it out here. Cooldown on TP. Three, two, one. Oh, oh my god, they're all around him. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. The one spot they didn't check. Never in doubt. Yeah. Not even close. Wonder why he bought a gem. Interesting. And Ruby running around with Earthshock. That is like. The most underwhelming spell in Dota form, probably. They found jabs. Yep, goodbye. Easy kill. <laughs> Ravage. That's going to get used here, though. Go after Yoey. They stole the axes, and they've taken him out of the fight immediately. So now, the position here for Moon is it in a nice enough spot to throw these axes out. They're going after RR with the axes. They're also forgetting their attention on the Palos, the Enrage. Is it going to be enough to keep him alive? They take out RR, they've got the hoof stomp through onto the tide. Axe is doing a lot of damage. That will take up the ages on this Ursa. Still has BKB though. He's got BKB and he's gonna blink right onto Moon. Moon needs to be careful. Four step into Nico! Oh no! They caught Moon again. They will get this kill. BDZ, he'll follow suit though. They've got the snowball that comes over that hits on a Nico. The damage from Raven starting to be too much. But DJ. He gets killed off. Nico survives. Jab's trying to help out Raven as best he can. And they will take out this Spectre. They'll look over at the Tusk. Jab's gone too. I, I gotta say, Moon out of position again here. Like he knows that Ursa's gonna respawn with BKB. Blinks right on top of Rubik and just kills him. Like if Rubik doesn't die there, he will take over the fight and win it for his team. But Moon has to be much more careful here. But good job on XTTN exploiting that. Very good Ravage here, taking out the beast instantly. This is as good as it gets. Like, you get a three-man Ravage, you kill a beast instantly before it gets any spells off. This should be your win of a team fight. So as I said before, you don't play it flawlessly, you will lose. So just look at this Rubik after the respawn. He could have stayed Ursa. here and thrown yeah. axes the entire time, but he keeps trickling forward, trickling I mean, forward. Look where he stands now. It's like so close to the Ursa. I, he has no business here. At all. His cast range is so far. Yeah. It was a big mistake by Moon, costing him the team fight. Because Spectre shouldn't have died there, Ursa should have died there. And then suddenly the gold is going to be very even. Now it's 15k. 
in favor of Execration. And then Nico looking rough. heals up as he's in the air from the Walrus Punch. I thought yeah. they killed him for a second. No, he was pretty healthy still. No, he, he went from like a sliver, but as he was in the air, I think he ate the cheese. Came back down. Probably, More health. yeah. They, they did have a cheese. You're right. Because he, he went up and then he came down. He's like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. I'm chunky boy. Okay, we'll, we'll have to see like when they take the next engagement. They also lost the gem. No, they still have the gem, actually. Never mind. But his Ursa is really, really farmed. He's yeah, so now far he's ahead a of the also. That means Ghost Step Down, Rubik. No effect. It is nullified. Wow. <laughs> Very smart uses of words here. Top tower is under Appreciate attack. that. That's why I got you here. Because you're smart. And I'm not. Now you are. Smarter than me. Don't tell me what I am. I won't. I'm not smart. <laughs> smoke picked up by the Elder Titan. They're going to try and smoke. Potentially to fight. Maybe even hold that for Roche, which could be up in 45. Yeah. You know how it feels right now? Four protect, one for Spectre. Because it Rubik fell off hard. so damn hard. He had a great game all the way up to that minute 20. He just kept dying, 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 dying. Like, it doesn't really feel like it has been... I like practiced a whole lot, you know what I mean? Looks very unrefined still. True. And I don't know how many chances you get in pups to practice and whatnot, but... Yeah, they're definitely gonna go back to the drawing board after this one. Like, if they win, it will be purely on the back of Spectre. And they just have to keep making... Keep making time for Spectre. Once she hits her butterfly timing... Maybe. Yeah, because Ursa doesn't have BKB. I mean, MKB. No slot for it. And he actually went for the 400 health Dyer's talent. Rather than the Spectre's attack. deck are slow. Interesting. Primal Roar. That's good to use. No fire there. Jam on the deck. Gone. Shards are in a decent spot. Steals the Earth Shock. And they'll buy back on the Enchantress. Not sure why he keeps stealing spells from Ursa. <laughs> All you really want is the axes? I mean, you, you can steal like some good host stomp or Lina stun or something, but well, I think if you Ursa use the host stomp, you have target. to get close to use it. Sure, sure, you gotta blink in to get it. But it could potentially be a fight turner. True. It's just Earthshock is like the least desirable spell in this game, probably. Mm. I feel like even a boar would have more impact than that. Or the hawk, in case on vision. Yeah. 20k lead now for execration. Feels like a yeah. lot. As Tsunami said, man, it's foolish to bet against a team that picked Beastmaster. Yeah, we already learned that last thing, like, yesterday. Yeah, and well, we still went Tsunami. against it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. It was very close of this game. Like, the, the team fights were, like, on the edge of going the other way. Yeah, and I don't think it's exactly over. I still think taking high ground could be... a uh, you know, potentially more difficult for Execration. Especially if Rubik has his hands on the Axis. Yeah. Which I don't know if he will anymore. He's playing very conservatively on the Beast. No fire again. DJ same just fought back. And yeah, that's the exact same place. And it looks like they want to try and fight this. He'll use the Ravage. They've got the stun. The Telekinesis comes through with the Walrus Punch. Do they have the damage to get the kill here with BKBB Popeye Palace? So go after this Tusk. They'll get the kill to Japs and look the other way. Axis flying around, but it's not enough damage. As Raven is way out of the fight now. Ooh, pops the ant disc. Okay. That'll do something. But yeah, that was a pretty panicky Ravage that was forced by Exity and being very aggressive on him. And they're not really letting Fnatic play the way they want to play. Like, they had just one good initiation on the Beastmaster, on the Triangle, but that's it. All the other fights have always been on the terms of Execration. Now they're in the Roche. Third Roche. And there's no the Agonyms. Oh my god, Ursa now also with the Agonyms. Oh gosh. So even less cooler on Enrage. He's just getting everything from Roche. Everything. Swift Blink also. Now sitting at 33k net worth. Okay, bro. This is, uh... Now Ravage doesn't even matter anymore. You just Enrage out of it. Yeah. 
And he's got Swift Blink. He's going to kill anybody he's in just go two MKB seconds. Next. Because he saw the quarter and staff Hawk. pick up. Did they see where the axes landed? Oh. I think he had his hands in the air for the roar. It was close. Close, close, close. I'm surprised Raven gave away his butterfly purchase. Because he purchased a quarter staff. Not sure why. Because it allows Ursa to immediately itemize into it, an MKB. Mm. Would they think that he's going for anything else? Oh, Rubik! Completely out of position here! Moon's caught, Ghost Scepter, Primal Roar, look at the damage. Moon caught again, and he just cannot be here. What was he doing there? He just beat out of bot, and they were all top. He blinked into the trees. Okay. Agent M. Yeah. I'm not sure what he was expecting from that. Double edge stolen. Let's do the next one. And double, double edge, edge stolen. stolen. Try it again. And uh, overpower. Earth shock stolen. <laughs> Earth shock stolen. <laughs> That's not what you want either. Keep trying. Jump through the deck. Telekinesis. Host stop coming through and. It's not going to end. All right, Nico. Hoof stomp stolen. Now they've got hoof stomp. They'll blink in, throw the hoof stomp. They've got the nullifier on the moon, and he's going in for he this. No buyback. Oh, dear. Moon's gone. 100 seconds. They're going to try and close this one out. They've taken out the tide. They'll get Raven. They'll call GG, and that will be it for Fnatic in game one. Execration taking a game off Fnatic, and Fnatic just did not look like they Wasn't had close. any game plan. Yeah, they crushed them. It was like a... Pretty puppy-ish draft. And for Fnatic, really, you know, I was not impressed with the Tide Hunter. No. I was not impressed with the Rubik. They got to go back to the drawing board. It looked very unrefined, very rough. Stick to normal stuff. Just ban out the Beastmaster. Like, yep. in a straight-up game, you should be the team that's favorite. You know, like, don't try anything fancy. Don't be cute. It really didn't work out for you. Execration no. punished you hard. Yeah, they did. And, uh, you know, again, it's uh, thinking you can beat a Beastmaster, even though you're a Rubik. We got fooled again. Beastmaster, it seems like he's going to be one of those heroes that has close to 100% win rate. Uh, yeah. I just don't know what you do against this Beastmaster. Yeah, he's just ban it. So Just ban it. Execration, take a one nothing lead over Fnatic. We'll see who comes away with game two. But before we go there, we've got game one to break down and a panel to do so. Back over to you guys. Who needs a drawing board? This is chalkboard level stuff. This is elementary. Ban the Beastmaster. It's not that complicated. You don't need to outplay yourself. It doesn't matter what you think Rubik can help you with. The hero is just too damn strong. And we had axes skilled Wait, up. Wait, you actually have Rubik? I actually do have a Rubik <laughs> shirt on. You were wearing that all day? I was repping yep. it. Uh, you were ready for it. All <laughs> I right. was ready for it. <laughs> but Execration were even more ready for it. There is only one true master um, of the axes. It's the beast master. It was the beast it's master. It's the beast master. Um, yeah, th this game overall, I think, could have went in Fnatic's favor if Moon played it a little bit better on the Rubik. Yeah. Like you can, um, you can argue it's not easy. He's playing versus Blink on Ursa versus Centaur with Stampede, but uh, it, it all comes down, I believe, to practice and how much you're used to being out of position, aiming those axes, and at the same time oh, he was practicing your, hard this game. He, he was practicing this game, but I don't think he was practicing this before, at least. <laughs> don't get your practice during the DPC. Exactly. Oh, no, I, I meant, you know, practicing being out of position <laughs> oh, because, because okay. he, he was really good at it. This That's game. for sure. Yeah, this game's uh, kind of on moon, uh, like 70%, I would say. I, I think the top lane could have done uh, better against uh, the Ursa with the, this minus armor coming out from Gush uh, with the tag team. Like, I, I think they should be able to trade a bit more kills. Uh, like there was